What's up there, Workforce? Chris here with work to game We need to dive into the notes first before we can have a discussion on all of this, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm just in the item section here of the patch notes. The patch notes are incredibly long, so I encourage you to go through and give them a glance, especially in areas like your job, and if you're a crafter and gatherer, read through this, because I'm just going to fly through this. Now, there are new recipes added. They've been kind of they say some of those will be added at a later date because I assume some of those are tied behind the new content, so they don't want to spoil anything. Um, new crafter actions have been added, so we've got things uh, like keeping you from having one progress point remaining. Um, you know, reflect increases inner quiet stack by up to three, and so on. So, uh, looking forward to kind of seeing if these actually change rotations and all of that. Uh, we've got some adjustments here where things are being acquired at lower levels, other things are being pushed up in their uh, success rate. Um, CP cost being reduced. So across the board, it basically just looks like they're buffing a bunch of stuff. And then we're removing a ton of things here. So we're removing a bunch of things from kind of all classes. We're removing individual things here from kind of, it looks like they're kind of targeting like that cross-class system um, just at a glance. And it and then they're kind of in accordance with the change, the following actions can now be learned by all crafting. So then they're adding them right back. So instead of having kind of rapid synthesis, you know, one, two, and three up here, down here, they're just gonna add rapid synthesis kind of as one big thing. Uh, so the, now I don't think, uh, at least at a glance, I don't think we're gonna be really feeling like a whole lot's missing. I just feel like it's gonna be a lot simpler. Uh, so you've got things here where they're, they're numbering things before and it's just going to be one skill now. Um, so efficiency, you know, these new things have been added. Basic synthesis mastery efficiency increased to 20%. Um, and we've got some UI changes. They've been showing these in the live letters up into this point. So we've got this new recipe tree like easel thing here where, you know, they're making an easel so that you can see all the things that go into it. And then you have a raw materials list and you can see the shopping list. And you should be able to click on these and it'll say like, oh, beehive chip, this is where you get that. Moco grass, this is where you get that. Um, you know, and if something needs to be crafted or gathered or whatever, you'll see, oh, is that something I can do? Or do I need to go to the market board and buy that? Ideally, this raw materials list will be bindable uh, is what it looks like. And you'll be able to open it while you're in your market board. And uh, you'll be able to kind of use that to shop for the things you need. Quick synthesis got some drastic changes. It's no longer going to fail as long as you meet the craftsmanship requirement. And it's now, if your uh, control is above what it needs to be, you're going to start having reasonable improvements to improve the, the chance of getting high quality. Because right now, it's fairly low. If you craft 99 of something that you're way above the skill cap for, you don't get that many high quality um, compared to if you actually just go craft them. It's super easy to get high quality. So this should be much closer to that. And then when you're using it to craft like a big stack of something, say you're making rivets or cloth or something, uh, the craft per synthesis has been reduced. From there, uh, your collectible exchanges will always be crafted as collectible, so you don't have to remember to kind of turn that on. Uh, and then Descent got a drastic number of changes as well. It can no longer fail regardless of your desynthesis level. Now, the requirements to unlock Descent have not been changed, um, so you're still going to have to kind of get that unlocked. But for those of you that haven't and know how hard it is to level up, and so you haven't, it should be easy. And now, all those desynthesis that you haven't leveled up, because there's currently a cap, the total limit has been removed. Uh, so you can now level them all up, I guess. And they've kind of hinted that this was coming down the pipe. Uh, so speculating that this was the case, I know I've been holding on to a ton of dungeon drops and all that. So I guess I'll start leveling all of that up. Now, when, the when your descent level is higher than that of the item you're desynthesizing, the number of items yielded will increase. So, and, it, and you'll start to see rare items drop. So it says increased chance of receiving rare items. Uh, based on the fact that their descent skill, you know, is above the, the optimal of six. Uh, the level rate, uh, leveling rate for, you know, grinding it up has been increased and the level cap has been increased from 450 to 460. Uh, and then from there, you start to get into gatherers. Sneak, for example, was taken away from all three gatherers and instead they just added sneak and now it doesn't slow your movement speed and it doesn't... Um, and it automatically scales itself to four levels above your own and can be used while riding mounts. You have things that increase shard just, you know, for your botanists and miners. And then um, you, you start to see things being taken away uh, based on the fact that they just added that stuff. So you don't need those things. Like you don't need stealth since everybody got stealth. Uh, so they've 
they've once again done exactly the same things that they did to crafters above they've gone in and just made things simpler and easier and more powerful uh it just seems to be the theme and so like it's possible i missed one or two things in here that feel like they they hurt us but across the board i feel like you know they said like hey there's no reason to have all this intense stealth stuff let's get rid of all that and let's put it under one big stealth thing that just takes care of it uh so the overall experience points gained for gathering classes has been increased so easier to level up all the way through 5.0 content so not just previous uh gathering rates have been increased special conditions for gathering certain nodes uh have been adjusted and then a quick gathering thing has been adjusted so just like they adjusted that kind of quick scent they've added quick gathering which will allow you to continuously gather a specific slot so i can just take this bright flax and i can quick gather um basically all of it Quick gathering cannot be used for leaves, unspoiled nodes, ephemeral nodes, legendary nodes, or favors. Um, but when you're just out there gathering things up, should be easy. When gathering item for the first time, the gathering rate will no longer be lowered. Um, so right now, what you have to do is you have to save your CP up, and you kind of have to blast it up to guarantee that you can get that unlock, even though the item on the other side might be that 100% chance, because you're just going back and filling out your log. That won't be the case. Items not recorded in your gathering log will no longer appear as unknown either. Um, so this should just be a whole lot easier. Uh, the required level to equip the following items has been lowered. Uh, so, you know, you now get that sledgehammer and scythe at 10 instead of 11. And then you're seeing across the board these gathering uh, logs where before you kind of had to get over that threshold and it felt like, oh, I need to be gathering the next set of things, but I can't see them yet. They've reduced all that. So uh, you never have that kind of awkward moment where you feel like you're having to push through um, and kind of earn that next round of gathering log. Now it's just being handed to you to make the leveling that much faster all the way up through the current content. So this isn't just something that they've gone back and made it easier to get into Shadowbringers. They've done this the whole way up. Items at unspoiled and legendary nodes will no longer be out of reach. Um, you've got different, you've got Gathering points uh, have been added, fish have been added, new items have been added to existing points, and we're getting our custom deliveries in Yulmore. And uh, that's really it. So it's a lot of changes, and I definitely have some opinions on this. I assume many of you crafters and gatherers do, or anybody who's been holding off on this content, maybe this will be what finally pushes you in, or maybe this is what finally makes you decide it's not worth it. So let's talk about that. Okay, so I flew through those changes. There were a drastic number of skills that have been adjusted. There's been new things added. There's been things taken away uh, for the sake of simplicity. We've seen this sort of thing in the battle system before, uh, where you go in and you just wide scale just simplify something it's probably been a long time coming as they prepare to get us into the rebuilding of the sea of ishgard it makes sense that if you were going to simplify that you would do it now because you want as many people engaging in the system as possible as we prepare to start dealing in gatherer fates crafter fates uh, and having the entire server hopefully shift a little bit of their time towards gathering and crafting so at a, at a base level, I understand why now is when they're doing it. That makes sense to me that if you were going to simplify the crafter and gather system, you would do it before you do what will likely be the largest amount of crafter and gather, uh, basically, I, I guess, tasks to do, uh, content per se, uh, that we've ever had added. Because up until now, that's largely been, I'm going to make items that players need, I'm going to sell items that players need, and I'm, I'm just going to kind of provide whatever the server needs and I'm going to make things for my house and that's been mostly it's it's a very loose form of content that when people spend all their time crafting and gathering that's they set their own goals there isn't a, a raid schedule or dungeons to clear or anything like that uh, the turn-ins the collectible system is about as I guess mainline as it gets when trying to compare it to what the battle class system has uh, so uh, I understand the need for simplification I do. I, I get that. It makes sense. Um, if you guys saw the live recording of the podcast, which goes out on Monday uh, with Comic Storian, there, uh, you start to get a little bit of a feel for why I'm a little bit frustrated with 5.1. Um, we've been having a little bit of a discussion over on our Discord. Uh, links are always in the description below. Feel free to join us in chats over there uh, where we're seeing kind of mixed responses to the patch notes. And overall, I think that the patch kind of breaks into four 
chunks. Uh, the first chunk is like our mainline stuff, right? So it's when we get our raid, this will be the patch cycle that we get our ultimate. Uh, we're getting more main story, etc., etc. It's a, what a point one is. We know what a point two is. We know what a point three is and so on. They follow a pattern and they're full of things that we're all going to engage with, but really shouldn't surprise you. Maybe it surprised you when they first announced that the raid would be near, but we knew we'd get a raid on point one, point three, point five. Uh, and so that's not really that surprising, right? When when they announce Deep Dungeon, it shouldn't surprise you. When they announce whatever the new Relic Guide will be, knowing that there will be a Relic shouldn't surprise you. Just what the Relic is may have a couple little surprises in it. Uh, and then the second chunk is the battle system, which is ever-changing. That's PvE and PvP, and it got a big chunk of changes, especially to a handful of jobs. Uh, me as a warrior, it doesn't drastically change the way I play, but if I was a ninja main, this is huge. Uh, so there's a handful of jobs that were pretty drastically affected, and I encourage you to go look through that. The third section is crafting and gathering, but not all players engage with this. So it shouldn't really rub people the wrong way that we make changes to this system in theory, um, because it's not everybody. It's a much smaller system. And then the fourth is kind of your role play community. That's usually where a lot of our kind of different quality of life things are added to housing and so on. And I would put New Game Plus off in that category now that we know that it doesn't have any rewards. Now that we know that a standard person will not be using it to level up alternate jobs, um, it ends up being something much more for people that just want to spend time kind of hanging out in the game, developing and experiencing the narrative for themselves. Um, it's not going to give you progression towards getting the highest eye level or towards making wealth or whatever, um, I guess, somebody who isn't as immersion focused might shift to. And you may fall into multiple of those buckets. They're not, they're not exclusive. So you may go, oh, I'm a savage raider, but I also do role play or, or whatever. Like it, there's no rule saying you can't dip into all of it. And this is a wonderful game if you enjoy all of it. Uh, but for many of us that need breaks from time to time, it's because we don't fit in all of those categories. New Game Plus, for me, for example, doesn't really appeal to me. But we're here to talk about crafting. And the, the frustrating part about this is that it... Crafting was a function of time before. So um, what you paid for when you bought something that was crafted was time. So if you bought it high quality, that meant it was crafted. If you bought it normal quality in a big stack, then it was probably either vendor bought or it was auto sent or something like that. Uh, and so, or it was, it was gathered by somebody who was also leveling, right? So they were willing to do it anyway because they needed experience. And so they're in some items, there could be this drastic price difference between high quality and normal quality, uh, and that's because you're paying for that top level person to make the high quality, and you're paying for that low level person here, if it makes a difference. If it doesn't make a difference, they end up squishing together, and you see high quality and normal quality competing for which can be the lower price, as if the quality doesn't matter at all. Um, now, that kind of goes away now that we can auto synth high quality. Now that I can go back and make leveling packs for anybody by just hitting auto synth, uh, now that I can provide huge amounts of raw resources with literally no effort, um, that goes away. So the idea of people saying, oh, I'm going to make a ton of money doing this, just know that now everybody else has that ability too. Uh, so I, I think long term, it will probably drive prices down um, because there's no barrier to entry anymore. So you have more crafters capable of providing the good. And so there is a lower reward for that. Uh, the trade-off is that there's a lower threshold to get over it, but I don't know that that's worth that. I think that having people who can do stuff I can't is aspirational. I think in a MMO, it's a balance between accessibility and aspiration, right? And so you don't want something being so hard to get that new players don't stand a chance of getting it. And so you need things like accessibility. And so that's where a lot of thing, quality of life things come in that cause you to level faster, make the UI easier. Um, you know, when we see the ARR squish, that's all in the name of accessibility. We've seen a lot of things this time around with accessibility. And that's why you see people that are frustrated and using terms like casual bringers. Um, because this time around, we've gotten a lot of quality of life changes that that are drastically making the game easier to get to um, with the exception in theory of kind of that savage and ultimate content, right? So your everyday grinds, your, your roulettes, um, leveling up your classes, getting through the stories, getting caught up, uh, those are all getting easier and easier as they add things like jump potions, uh, different you know amounts of experience boost to things, uh, simplifying the rate, at, simplifying jobs, simplifying quest lines, uh, it, adding more ways to get experience, 
it all is in the name of accessibility. Now, aspiration is where they add things to the game that are worth getting. And so that's where there's something that takes effort to go get. So that's your extreme fights, that's your savage fights, that's your ultimate fights. And that up until now has been things that have been very big grinds. And so that's things like the relic. Um, so Eureka was a big one of those grinds. Uh, seeing people get to do Baldi's and Arsenal at the end could be aspirational for many who are like, man, I wish I could do Baldi's and Arsenal, but I've been ignoring Eureka this whole time. And then it was like, wow, I'll never get through that whole grind in time. So you end up just having to look on with a little bit of envy or respect or whatever you want to call it. Um, crafting and gathering has fallen entirely in that grind category. There's nothing too complicated about crafting and gathering. You can get to, the rotations are not more complicated than mastering your battle class, they're just different. And so you could get to know those, memorizing all the unspoiled nodes, memorizing, going out and doing crafting, doing gathering. It's incredibly relaxing. All of my gatherers are already capped um, because it's incredibly relaxing and the leaves level you up so fast. So if you want to do it quickly, you could do it without ever leaving Crystarium uh, for fishing. You could just go buy the fish and they've been cheap up until this point. Uh, and so you can just go buy those and turn those in and your leaves recover decently quick. So if you're not an active crafter and gatherer, your leaves are probably at cap most of the time. So is there an optimal use of leaves? Absolutely. If yours are just sitting at cap, does it matter? No, just use them for whatever. Uh, and so I, I think that the aspirational act of crafting and gathering up until this point has been, you know, that, that desire to actually like level it up. Decent is not complex to level up. It's incredibly expensive on either your time, your money or both, uh, but not anymore. And I think there's something disappointing about that. Uh, it's one of my frustrations. My two frustrations with this patch really hinge on new game plus not having rewards and on the crafting changes. Uh, I think that this is too much of a simplification. I think that as somebody who played WoW through years and years until they got to the point where they just made everything accessible and then required you to do all of it by the very nature of that, you know, you got to the point where you're like, well, I might as well have all my ga my crafters leveled because then I'd be able to repair myself. Now that it's this easy, why would you not? And so I felt this obligation to do things because they were all so easy. Um, and I was in, and I was raiding at the time. And so my raid group expected me to have everything that was easy. Um, when we were in Burning Crusade, not everybody in my guild was required to have every attunement. Uh, there were keys and stuff that if somebody had it, that was good enough. There were uh, gear sets that you had. You had tanks that had elemental resistance sets, but only the tank needed that. And so like, there were things that you did that were unique to each player. And as that got simplified, I think that that did a lot of damage to what made that game unique, what made that game different than any other game I've still played to this day. And Final Fantasy has a lot of unique characteristics to it. Um, I think that the crafting and gathering system being something that like having all your crafters at cap and having all your gathers at cap, while it may not feel like a big deal to people who've always had them at cap, um, it's a pretty small group of people and it it really especially to have them geared out and, and be able to craft high quality and everything on demand and know how all that works and have all the collectible systems kind of all in your head and that's functioning and the turn-ins and the custom deliveries and knowing how scripts work and all that that's that's something that most players are intimidated by because it is a lot it's a lot to do it's not each individual step isn't complex, but the total time commitment, the total resource content commitment is huge. And seeing that degraded, I think, lessens the quality of that content. Um, it lessens the reward. It, 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 we should be able to do anything in an MMO. There should be no piece of content, in my opinion, outside of maybe time sensitive events that people cannot do with the right amount of time and effort. But while we can do anything, I don't think we should be able to do everything. I think that looking at the total lay of the land, the total theme park, it should be too big to get to all of it. It should be too big that when you go into a theme park that has the right number of rides, you should be there all day and you didn't get to ride them all. You should have to make choices because each thing is so individually complex and deep. And even if that depth just comes from time, uh, time committed, it, it still, there's something nice about these systems that are late game where people who are like, oh, I tried fishing, never really liked it. And it's like, oh, well, I've been gigging. What's gigging? And it's like, oh, well, you didn't get to it because it's later. And so like having things like that, there are these little things hidden 
behind these walls is what gives you that sense of accomplishment, and that sense of reward um, that I think MMOs, at least for me, hinge on. Uh, I, anybody can beat a single player game given enough time, especially on normal mode. Like it's meant to be beaten. Um, but in MMO, there's something nice about knowing not everybody can do what I've done and not, ev and I can't do everything you've done. There's, there's things on your character that you have completed that I don't and making everything a short week, maybe two week long grind. That's not expensive, not hard. Um, it's a little disappointing. So that's kind of my thoughts on the crafting and gathering system to kind of just, it, it, it's a lot of simplification. Um, the individual action changes, I flew through them just to give you some context in case you haven't read the notes. But if you've listened to all this and you're like, wow, what really changed? I encourage you to go back and read it um, line over line. It, it, basically, they, they just gave things success rates of 100% like all over the place. They s dropped the level requirement to things all over the place. They made, now you no longer have to level one crafter to get it to the other. Just like in the old school when we had to do the battle class system, that cross roll, that's been simplified. Oh, you're a crafter, you've got it, you're good. Um, and I think that's disappointing. And I think that it was something that made the crafting system unique. And uh, to see that degree, I, I, as of this point, I think that's a mistake. Um, the Sea of Ishgard, like the, the rebuilding is still something I'm excited about. The idea of crafting and gathering leaves is still something I think is going to be awesome. Um, seeing individual servers compete, I think is going to be awesome. I think there's a lot of really cool things coming for crafters and gatherers, um, to focus on. So if you're looking for that silver lining, just know this seems to be the expansion for crafting and gathering content. Uh, I thought Namatsu was great, but this is, and Dominant, Dominant Kali was fine. And if this can kind of take what those were and kind of, I guess, match that and then scale it up uh, times 10, that would be that would be worth the changes, I guess. I could focus on that. I could be happy enough with that. Um, but when we get out the other side next expansion and we don't have a city to rebuild and we don't have gathering fates and crafting fates and I'm leveling it up, I'm going to be reminded of how empty this is now and uh, what it once was. Um, so I, I do think there's a lot of good things in this patch. I don't want to just be negative, but when it comes to this, this is, this is where most of my, my feelings of sadness come from, um, with 5.1. Uh, so I'm hoping there's enough coming down the pipe in 5.2 and 5.3 that, to, that adds to the complexity of crafting and gathering. But, uh, as of today, I think that it's, it's been a big loss for crafters and gatherers. And, uh, I'm really sorry to anybody else that feels the same way. And I hope that there's enough other in those other buckets of what we're getting to at least make this patch something worth looking forward to on Tuesday. Uh, my name is Chris with work to game I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Uh, let's gear up for 5.1. Let's enjoy the crap out of that new raid. And uh, let's let's start preparing for Ishgard. That should be a really, really fun journey. Talk to you next time.